All right, Shalom. I like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Kodash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect that scattered abroad teaching His word of sincerity and truth. All right, I got a quick lesson uh, based on you know how the Most High is going to bring us back to Israel. All right, and uh, what we went through and what we're going through today is a is a punishment but we almost out of our punishment we almost out of our captivity now this is second edges chapter two and um and uh verse let me see here verse 20 it says do right to the wit to the widow judge the fatherless give to the poor defend the orphan clothe the naked Heal the broken and the weak. Laugh now, slack you. Laugh not at the lame man to scorn. Defend the maim and let the blind man come into the sight of my clearness. Keep the old and the young within thy walls. What, wheresoever thou findest the dead, take them and bury them, and I will give thee the first place in, in my resurrection. Abide still, O my people, and take thy rest. And thou quietness still come. Nourish thou children, O thou good nurse, establish their feet. And how is this? Is first off is through the spirit, all right, with you uh acknowledging, you know, who you truly are and who the true living power is. And that's your how Bashami was shy. You know, because the first step um in order for us to even get back to the kingdom, you have to acknowledge the savior. You have to acknowledge Yahweh Shai as your savior, man. You have to believe that, not just say it, you know, not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. All right. And it has to be your spirit. It has to be you consciously uh, turning from from wickedness into righteous righteousness, man. All right. So the first quickening spirit is, is your spirit, you know, your mind. You know, you was raised in this wicked society and the way that you was taught in this world was of the ways of the world. But when you became that new creature, you put away the old man, all right? And you believed in what? The scriptures, the manuscript, all right? So this is Second Edges chapter 2, uh, and uh, verse 25, it says, Nourish thou children, O thou, o thou good nurse, establish their feet. As for the servants whom I, whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thou number. Be not weary. For when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. And that's right, because the men and the women who wake up into this time, all right, starting with the men, the 144,000, you have one third, you know, which is the elect. On this side, you're not going to win. On this side, you're going to lose. All right, Yahawashai said, he that... Um, he that um, loses his life for my sake shall find it, all right? Because on this side, you're going to lose your life, man. Your life is is, is uh, given to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So according to this world, you're going to suffer. According to this world, you know, it's not going to go as pleasant as you want it to go. Because you're fighting against the wicked, the wickedness, the uh, principalities of this world, all right? Which is Satan and his counterpart Esau. Now it says... Um, be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, because there's a time that's coming, which we're approaching, all right, in a few hours, all right, you know, on the Lord's time, okay, uh, that in, the, in a few, we're going to be going through what was the Bible called Jacob's trouble, all right, and two thirds of our people, they're going to suffer uh, for not, well, they're going to suffer for their wickedness. All right, they're gonna suffer for the sins and the transgressions they committed against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, it says, "Be not weary, for when the day of the Lord, excuse me, from when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful." That's right. They're gonna be weep, weeping. They're gonna be sorrowful. They're gonna be vexed. You know, they're gonna be uh, uh, crying. They're gonna be upset. They're gonna be miserable. All right. And it's all because they reject the word of the Most High. All right. It says, Others shall weep and be sorrowful, 
but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. All right. And I could get a um, quick precept real quick is um, I'm thinking of um, Isaiah chapter 65 and 11. It says, but ye are they that forsake the Lord and that forget my holy mountain that prepare a table for that troop and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. And that's the two thirds. All right. They prepare that table. All right. That number two thirds. All right. For that drink offering. What Esau, meaning Esau, you know, you're giving yourself over, all right, to not be protected by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, I'm going to read it again. For ye are they that forsake the Lord, meaning those that forsook the Lord, that forget my holy mountain. What is the holy mountain? All right, is that this, this, uh, excuse me, of acknowledging who you truly are as a people, acknowledging the true and living power, Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai. Because he is our protection, man. The scriptures say, um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it. And they are safe. All right. So it says, and forget my holy mountain. You don't even know who you are. You don't even believe that you're an Israelite. It says that prepare a table for that troop. Who's that troop? Esau. And that furnace the drink offering unto that number, which is the two thirds. It says, therefore, will I number you to the sword. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, listen up, because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spec, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Okay? So when the Lord called, you didn't answer. How did the Lord call? The Lord called through his prophets. Okay? That he set out there in the highways and byways. All right? And I'm going to give you... Um, and I'm going to be direct with you. The men, all right, who the Lord set up through uh, Great Millstone, starting with the elders, apostles of Great Millstone, man, and the brothers on down teaching 100% truth, all right? And then you got other men like-minded that's not under Great Millstone, but are teaching 100% truth because they're teaching the correct doctrine, man, all right? So it says, It says, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. What slaughter is coming? Jacob's trouble. All right. Martial law, you know, from, uh, you know, when they declare a state of emergency, when this economy actually crashed here in Babylon. All right. You're going to have sedition among men in the streets. You're going to have uh, concentration camps. People, you're going to, you, you people going to be tortured, man. Uh, famine. Okay. A famine of food and water. You're not going to be able to eat. You're going to have no refuge, man. Okay. Um, you're going to be taking the, the mark of the beast Which is the RFID microchip You're going to be willing Because you're going to want to live your comfortable life man Alright but instead You're going to be slaughtered man Alright because ultimately What's going to destroy this place North America Is, is nuclear fire man By the ways of World War 3 Okay now it says um, uh, Ye all shall bow down to the slaughter Because when I called ye did not answer When I spec ye did not hear but did evil before my eyes and did choose wherein I delighted not. So in the time of your liberty, you despise the word of the Lord. That goes back to second Ezra, the ninth chapter. All right. You despise the words of the Lord, man. All right. So it says, um, and did choose wherein I delighted not. So you didn't do the things that the most high delighted. All right. That you didn't please the most high. You didn't please Yahweh Shai and do the things that he delighted. in. So verse 13, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servant shall eat. You hear that? It says, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Because in that day, all of your sin is going to make you ashamed in that day. All right. And I'm talking about you niggas until you, you women, man. You men of Israel, all right, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians, all right, two-thirds of, of you Israelites that are wicked and reject the word, you, all right, and the woman, you're all going to be ashamed in that day because your sin's going to be before you, man, okay, and, and you can laugh, scoff all you want, but this day is approaching, and there's nothing you're going to be able to do, there's going to be no more YouTube. There's going to be no more making money off of uh, selling your own soul, man. 
you know, selling your life to YouTube, man. Selling your life to filming yourself and making all this money and being and get, uh, receiving fame, you know, and uh, uh, being proud. All right. What are you going to do when your local uh, uh, corner store, bodega or supermarket doesn't have food? What are you going to do when military troops are going door to door down your block in which you live? What are you going to do? Who's going to protect you in that day? That's Proverbs, the first chapter. The Lord said he will laugh at your calamities, man. All right. So now the last verse, it says, um, verse 15, and ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord Yahweh shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. All right. Because we're Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, the elect, man. All right. Which I hope to be a part of. The hopeful elect is going to be delivered by Yahweh by Shem in that day. So in all reality, brothers, those of the hopeful elect, we don't have anything to worry about. You know, the scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be saved, but that's okay. Because they said it shall scarcely be saved. You're going to be saved if you're the elect. But it is going to be crazy, man. It is going to spook you out. It is going to scare you up, you know. But at the end of the day, we have salvation, man. Through Yahweh by Shem Shai, man. You know. Uh, so back in 2nd Nedrus chapter 2 and 27 Be not worried And when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh Others shall weep and be sorrowful But thou shalt be merry and have abundance The heathen shall envy thee But they shall be able to do nothing against thee Saith the Lord Yeah, you other nations When you see these men Prospering in the time of your calamity You're going to envy them You're going to hate them You're going to wish that you can probably destroy these men but you're not going to be able, man. All right. It says the heathen. And just like you eat, you Israelites, you also called the two thirds. They also called heathens as well, man, because heathen and Gentile goes two ways, man. If you look it up, the word Gentile means uh, uh, usually it means a non-Israelite people. So usually it means a non-Israelite people, but it can refer to the Lord's people as well. Those that won't hearken unto the ways of the Lord, man. You are now officially heathens, man. Uh, what's that? Isaiah, I think the 13th chapter it says, uh, ye that join with them shall be thrust through. Shall be thrust through. All right. So it says, verse 29, uh, my hand shall cover thee so that thou children shall not see hell. Woo, hell meaning the uh, dirt, man. Meaning the grave, man. Okay. He said, my hand shall cover thee so that thou children shall not see hell. So even the Lord's uh, men, their family going to be protected And who the Lord allow Alright It says Be joyful, O thou mother With thou children, for I will deliver thee saith the Lord So we, so all praises to Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shai, man, this is music, man It says, remember thou children that sleep For I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth And show mercy unto them For I am merciful, saith the Lord Almighty so our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and His Son, Yahweh Shai, is, is merciful, man. Merciful enough to bring us out of hell, man. Bring us out of this society and this captivity in which He put us in, man. That's mercy, man. The Lord showed us mercy for allowing us to call upon His name, to giving us our identity, to giving us His word, and to believe in, man. That's that's mercy, man. He giving us His hand to, to, uh, to hold on to, you know, and to be uh, pulled up out of the pit, man. Because this is surely a pit. You know, Micah 2 and 10, it says, uh, this land is polluted. It shall lead you to a sore destruction. It talks about how this is not our rest. You so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, and Native Seminole Indians, this is not your rest. All right? And if you receive riches in this side, then you just received your constellation, man. And guess what? It is a blessing, but a blessing to your death of a grievous death, man. All right? Because uh, what's that? Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, or is it First Corinthians four and one and down? It talks about how uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the God of this world have blinded the minds of you, man. You know what? I'm gonna get that real quick. Get that real quick. Uh, first, first Corinthians four. Okay, it's Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four, and it says verse three. But if the God, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh Mashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, 
should shine unto them. So Yahweh Shai ain't healing you. Yahweh Shai ain't shining unto you, but he's shining upon the elect, man. All right. And right now you can see the shine. The scriptures say, uh, he that heareth the most high heareth us. He that is in trouble come rest with us. All right. Now back in second edges two, it says verse uh, 32. It says, embrace thou children until I come and show mercy unto them. For my wells run over and my grace shall not fail. Meaning we got grace right now. And this is why we, the, the men of the Lord been telling you that you're running out of time, man. You're running out of time. The Lord's mercy is cutting short. It's going to be closed. The Lord's grace is cutting short. It's going to be closed. The doors of repentance is cutting short. It's going to be closed, man. It says, embrace thou children until, thy come, until I come and show mercy unto them for my wells run over and my grace shall not fail. Not grace of the Edomites, of, of man who the Lord creatures are. No, he's talking about himself. He's the one that gives grace, man. He that one gives long life. He that one takes life. He belongs the issue of death. It says, verse 33, I, Edris, received the charge of the Lord upon the Mount Arith that I should go unto Israel, but when I come unto them, they set me at north and despise the commandment of the Lord. So just like back then with Edris, they did, they do today. You got brothers all over the world teaching on the highways and byways, teaching on the internet of highways and byways, man. All right. And putting out shows and epistles and you and you two thirds of Israel. All right. You despise this truth. You misuse the prophets. You mock and scoff the words of the Lord. Well, it's going to come to your judgment, man. All right. And that's why you're so afraid and you hate us so much is because you don't want it to be true. But when these things come to pass, like Ezekiel said, then you're going to know that. The all right. So like you got cut off again. I have to fix um, my memory in my phone. And you got Satan going on. You got a couple over here going to war with each other. But, hey, all this going to come to an end, man. Hey, these women going to be in order, man. See, these men, they dealing with these, uh, you know, these pit bulls, you know. I don't know the situation, but it's like he wanted to put her hands on them, man. You know, now he going back for it, man. But anyway, man, I wanted to stick to the script. And I'm going to try to wrap this thing up. Well, Will and I hope that this lesson will be edifying to those of the hopeful elect, man. All right. Um, this is back in Second Edris. Um, I believe I was at uh, I was at 33. It says, "I Edris receive a charge of the Lord upon Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at north and despised the commandment of the Lord." Exactly. You know, just like today, like they done with Edris, they done with the the ancient prophets, man. Okay. They set at north all the counsel of the Lord, man. All right. Now it says, um, verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for the look for your shepherd. Hmm. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come at the end of the world. So we're looking forward to our shepherd, which his name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. We're looking forward to our shepherd, man. All right. Our savior, man, who truly died for the children of Israel, the children of Israel, and in particular, the election, because it's only going to be the elect that's going to be delivered at this time. Two thirds are going to be put into the lake of fire. They're going to be destroyed, man. All right. So it says, um, and therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, Notice he's talking about our people, but he's calling them heathen. It says, O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Look at your shepherd, he shall give you everlasting rest. For he is nigh at hand and shall come in the end of the world. And this is why we tell you that Yahweh Shai is going to crack those clouds with the, with, with the chariots, man, who the world ignorantly call UFOs. Now, you know, they recently, through the government, they are now saying that UFOs are real. This is how you know we at the end, man. You know, it took them all of this long time to really tell the truth about the sightings of the, the chariots, the angels that ride in those vehicles and what you call UFOs, man. There's so many things that's going on and only the ones that can see are the prophets because they're the watchmen sitting upon the tower, man. Blowing the trumpet, man. Warning you, man. It says, um, verse 35, be ready 
to the be ready to the reward of the kingdom. So we're looking to be ready for the reward of the kingdom, man. You know, coming uh, in the confidence uh, uh, and, and not pride, but but confidence and great faith. You know, when we see Yahweh Shai, man, not with our heads down and 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 feeling of great shame. You know, because of our sins, we ask the Lord to forgive us for all the sins we committed and which we didn't know. Now we know. You know, Lord said, "He that um, uh, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved." Man, all right. So it says, um, "Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore." Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. We do the same as well. We testify of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai openly, man. This is why, you know, uh, you know, Paul spoke about give your body as a living sacrifice. Here it is, the elect, the men stood stiffly for the name of the Lord, man. Showing their face, being uh, uh, demonized, you know, be, being spoken um, uh, uh, evil to upon the, wick, the wicked speaking evil upon us, lying, deceiving, misusing. You know, you got your vocab Malones out there. And you got many other guys that want to demonize this truth and stop you from understanding the truth, man. It's mainly not for us. It's for you, for the newly fruit, for the ones that's that's trying to see if this is true or not. You know, we already know that it's true. All right. So it says flee the shadow of this world. So you want to flee the darkness of this world, which is the philosophies, the ways of being an American, the ways of being whatever country you living in. This, this way of society, the Lord said, the fashion of this world shall pass away. So what fashion are we going to be in? We're going to be in the fashions of old, which us knowing and carrying ourselves in the laws and the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Keeping, a keeping according to our inheritance and our customs, man. All right? We're going to go back to that. The Lord said he required the things of old, man, not the things of new. All right? It says, flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. Or receive the gift that is given you. See, it's a gift. So in order for you to have faith, you got to have the gift. And the gift got to be given to you by Yahweh, the Heavenly Father. You know, Yahweh Shai only healed those who the Heavenly Father uh, uh, gave Yahweh Shai. All right? Who, who, I mean, excuse me. Who Yahweh, the Father, have opened the minds of them, was given to Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai healed them through the word, the gospel, man. All right? And we're going to receive the power physically. All right? The hill, you know, the lame, the, the, the maimed, the, the sick, the dumb, you know, casting out demons. We're going to do that as well when brothers receive those spiritual powers. But right now, it's all about the spirit. It's all about what? The faith, man. Hey, the 11 o'clock Israelites are going to come in because they're going to see the, they're going to witness the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And which Yahweh Shai did. Yahweh Shai was physically healing people, man. You had no choice but to believe, man. But right now, it's according to faith, man. All right? And even that time, it's going to be according to faith. But you're going to be able to see with your eyes more tan tangible, man. All right? So, it says, um, flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of, of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. O receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks unto him. That had laid you, that had led you, excuse me, that had laid you to, to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Take thou number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thou people which have been called from the beginning may be hollowed. And that's why it goes back into what? The first fruit, the 144,000, which are the first fruit of the Most High. All right. This is a, a powerful verse here, man. It says, which have been called from the beginning. So from the very beginning, the men of the Lord has always been the men of the Lord even now. That's why the scriptures say the prophets are subject to the prophets because the true prophets are the prophets are the prophets that was prophesied before, which proves reincarnation, man. 
It's simple, man. I'm going to read that again. It says, verse 41, The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thou people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. And how are they going to be hallowed? Because they are the elect. They're going to receive those crowns from Yahweh Shai hands. All right? It says, I, Edris, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their hands he set crowns, and was more exhorted, which I marveled at greatly. So that was Yahweh Shai. Edris saw Yahweh Shai giving the elect men crowns upon their head. Like kings, man, establishing them, hollowing them to be those great men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 44. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what is what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palm psalms, man. All right. It says, Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them psalms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Because these men stood stiffly, man. And soon the internet going to be cut off. YouTube going to be shut down. You're not going to be able to receive this truth, man. You're not going to be able to repent because you ain't going to have the word to be able to repent, man. And that's what you people fail to realize. Remember, uh, excuse me, my favorite scripture. I always quote, I think every video, Jeremiah 3.15. He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. It's about the knowledge and understanding. The scriptures say the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. That's what it's all about. It's not all about fame. It's not about self-glory. It's not about all the views and likes. It's about you receiving the knowledge and wisdom. The knowledge and understanding. The knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. The knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. <laughs> you know? That's what it's all about, man. It says, um, so they answered and said unto me, it is the son of the most high whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them and stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy power has shown, uh, excuse me, thou has seen. All right. So, you know, I just wrote it and wrote it. He wrote it up, man. All right. So for us to read today. You know, um, you know, these these scriptures are, are for are, are for our learning, man. All right. So I wanted to put that out there real quick. Um, you know, so I hope brothers of the hopeful elect, uh, you women out there as well who's watching, may you may, uh, may you've been edified, may it build upon your faith and your salvation toward your Bashim Yahweh Shai. And remember, we at the end, man. It's just only a few, you know, things left. We're looking for the, the force of the RFID microchip and we're looking for them to declare World War Three, man. All right. Everything else is down the line. It's coming all in sync, man. You know, the sedition among men, famine, the pestilences, people dying of uh, contagious cont uh, contagious uh, diseases, man. You know, airborne diseases. All these things is going to happen. It's going to, it's like that, man. You know, but mainly, like, the focus point is on when they force everyone to take the chip. The chip is the mark of the beast that the Bible speaks of, man. All right? And um, it's June. And there are microchips. <laughs> so, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.